We're going to talk about seed saving for pumpkins and what you need to think about before you put your pumpkins in the ground. First off, pumpkins are cross-pollinators. They're cross-pollinated by insects. So we need to keep the species of pumpkins 500 metres apart. So when I say species, there are three main species that we grow in Australia. Cucurbita maxima, Cucurbita moschata and Cucurbita pipo. If you glaze over when you hear Latin names, don't worry about it. All you need to know is how to tell them apart so that you only plant one of each species within a 500 metre radius. So, Cucurbita maxima, you can just talk about that. That's the corky stemmed one. Um, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and colours, but they all have this very distinctive corky stem um, and seeds that have a, a very distinctive cellophane covering on them. Easy to tell. These would cross if planted together, so only one corky stemmed one within 500 metres. The next one, Cucurbita moschata. These have a five sided angled stem with a big flare, or usually a big flare. Sometimes the flare is not quite so obvious, but these are Cucurbita moschata, so this is a cant and a butternut. And if I planted these together, they would cross. Um, so only one of those, but I can grow a butternut and this golden hubbard together and my seed would become true to type and that would be fine. Also on the table I've got Cucurbita pipo. So all these are table queen. Similar kind of stem to the um, Cucurbita machada in that they've got five sides and I hope you can pick this up on the camera but they have a much sharper angles and they're um, much um, more defined these ones are dried, I guess they're a bit easier to see in the garden. Um, very distinctive angled stem. So that's a table queen, that's a pumpkin that we eat. But this here is a mature zucchini that we have saved for seed. Um, this is a zucchini bianca. It is also Cucurbita pipo and has the very distinctive, very sharply angled um, stem on it to help tell, us, tell them apart. Um, if I grew these two together, they would cross and I'd have a pumpkini or something, you know, weird. So I'd need to keep those 500 metres apart. But I can grow one of each of these. So I could grow my zucchini, my Kent pumpkin and my small grey together and save seed from all of those and they'd be fine. There are in Australia two other species that are sometimes grown. They're pretty rare and you won't come across them very often, but just in case you do, uh, Cucurbita mixta. Um, all the Cushaw pumpkins fall into that. They're not really commonly grown. They're mainly a pie pumpkin, but you might come across them. There are different species you would be able to grow those um, and not have them cross with the three we've talked about. And also Cucurbita physifolia, um, which is Chilicoyote is the common name. And again, it's usually only grown for stock feed. Pigs love it, but you probably won't be growing it. To grow pumpkins for seed, or to grow anything for seed, you also need to think about the population size to make sure that you get good viable seed. You will get viable seed from a single pumpkin plant, but if you're trying to maintain a variety, you want at least five to 10 plants to keep some genetic diversity in there. If you're um, looking after a really rare variety or um, you know, a custodian of something special, you might actually be looking for more like 25 plants to make sure that that doesn't become inbred. You just need to make sure you've got enough space to get enough plants to get good seed. I don't think there's anything else I need to say about that. As seed savers, part of our role is to try and keep those seed lines pure and strong and, you know, good growers in the garden. And we do that by selecting the best plants when we're going for seed. 
So that's part of the purpose of having a population of five to 10 plants. It gives us a bit of wiggle room. So if one of them just doesn't seem to grow well or has a problem or is particularly disease ridden, is very, seems to be very prone to mold, we can actually remove it from the um, genetic pool. So that's called roguing out and we would just get rid of that plant. Let's talk about when you should harvest your pumpkins for the best seed. So you want to make sure that they're completely mature and ripe. For normal eating pumpkins, this is the same time as you would harvest them to eat. So you're looking for when their skin is mature and you can't get your fingernail into them. And also when the little tendril next to the, um, where they're attached onto the vine, this little tendril, most of them will have this. Um, when that dies back is a good indicator. Or you can just wait till the end of the season when um, the whole vine dies back. That's another good thing. If you're saving for zucchini, you really, really want to, uh, to um, keep it until it is fully mature. So not at the eating stage. So this can get tricky. Sometimes people think that's when it's really big. It's not about size um, or color or any of those things. Again, it's about the maturity and the best way to tell is when you can't get your fingernail into the skin anymore. Um, then that is mature enough for seed. Right, so having got to the mature point, we need to know how to harvest them and you're just going to cut them off the vine. This is an excellent example. The actual, this is where the growing vine was. So it was cut on either side. We know that that um, is going to mature quite well. You can um, cause a problem and have rotting in your pumpkins if you cut them a bit too close. So this one's probably a bit too close to where we'd want it. Once you've harvested them, you want to keep those um, pumpkins or your zucchinis for about five or six weeks afterwards because there's an after ripening process um, where the seeds are still continuing to develop before you actually take the seed out. You can just keep those pumpkins until you're ready to eat them and then when you're cooking them Take the seed out then, and that'll be fine. So we're going to do some processing and just actually get the seed out of the pumpkin. I've picked the hardest one, because this one's very difficult to break open. But the easiest way I've found to do this is just to drop it. <laughs> I'll just try that again. Just drop it. Okay. So now we can just pull all of the seed out. Do you want to have a look? And you'll notice this is a white seed compared to the brown seed, but this is also uh, Cucurbita maxima. And you can't see the cellophane at this point, but once these have dried, there'll be a cellophane cover. Clearly pumpkin for dinner tonight. And then I'll just um, pull as much of the flesh out of this as, as possible to make the washing easy. So now we've got the seed out of the pumpkin, most of the flesh out of the way. We just need to wash the rest of it off. Um, might need a few applications of water and a sieve, but it's um, not particularly hard. You don't need to ferment uh, pumpkin seeds. Just need to get all of that 
orange map. We just need to get all of that orange matter off there. Um, we're also going to throw away that seed is obviously empty. I don't know if you can see that it's not filled. It's not nice and plump like some of these other ones. So that's not a viable seed. We'll um, take that one out. There's another one that's obviously not good. Okay, I'm just going to get a sieve. see the um, cellophane on that already can you see the there's a covering it'll be much more obvious as it dries just going to give them a, a one more rinse You'll notice the seeds are floating and a lot of the rubbish is down, so further down, so I can take off good seed off the top. Just trying to pull off a bit more. That'll be good enough. Leaving behind the rest of the rubbish. And then we need to dry it. So you can either spread it out on a spread it out on a tea towel or on a bit of screen is what I normally use. You can pinch it on fly screen off your window. Temporarily, of course, or or just spread them out on a cloth. That'll work too, and leave them all to dry. As they dry, I'll come and sort of stir them around occasionally so that they're not touching each other, so that they dry thoroughly. They'll stay on the screen for you know some days, a week, and then they will be clearly touch dry on the outside, but they won't be dry enough for storage. They hold quite a lot of moisture inside them. Um, so paper bags for at least a month to get them dry enough to be able to store them in a jar. Ah, the most, most important part, and I almost forgot and I would have been in big trouble, a label. I need to go and write a label and pin it on here straight away because no matter how sure you are that you're gonna remember exactly what it is you processed, in a month's time, after you've done a few different ones, for sure you won't remember the variety this is. And that's all you need to know to be a successful seed saver of pumpkins. Thank you.